Hi, my name is David, and I try to play guitar. I'm not very good, as you can tell. One day, I saw a video of blues great Joe Bonamassa getting very technical about his guitar amplifiers. For guitar player, that guy really knows his stuff about amps. He inspired me to learn more. But to really understand guitar amps, you need to take them apart and put them back together. I watched hundreds of videos. I read all kinds of books. From Craigslist and eBay, I bought a used soldering iron, some old voltmeters, an ancient oscilloscope, and other test gear. Eventually, I built an entire electronics lab. Now, I guess I'm sort of an amp mechanic. I fix other electronics too, and this, well, this is my journey. I figured I'd share so others can learn too. I hope you like it, and just as a disclaimer, be sure to consult an expert before working with electricity. Hey all you YouTubers out there, it's Dave the Amp Mechanic here, and uh, going on another guitar safari. Uh, that's kind of what I call these. The only reason I call them that is because that's what Joe Bonamassa calls it, the blues guitarist, when he goes out looking for guitars. And uh, this time, I'm going out to get some gear to equip my lab, some used gear. Now last time, I went out and I got the mother load of tubes. You should see that video if you want to check it out. Uh, today it's a very cold day in New England. It's about 11 degrees. And uh, all since the beginning of setting up my lab, I've been equipping it with used gear as best I can. I'm trying to save as much money as I possibly can. Today I'm going to pick up two signal generators and a DC power supply. Now one, one of those signal generators is good for generating signals towards the lower end of the spectrum. Sort of the same kind of signals that you would get from a guitar or the human voice. And those are great for testing amplifiers because you want to send a signal through the amplifier while you're working on it to make sure that uh, the signal is passing through the amplifier from the beginning of the circuit to the end of the circuit from the input to the speaker. And uh, there's one way to do that. You can just do it with a guitar if you want. Uh, you can plug a guitar into your amp, but if you're hitting the strings and strumming your guitar, it's harder to be working on the amplifier at the same time. So that's why signal generators are great. Sometimes, you, sometimes they're called function generators. Anyway, I try to pick up as much gear as I can used at a very inexpensive price. A lot of times you can get this on eBay, but you end up paying a lot of money for shipping because some of these items can be a little bit heavy, depending on how big they are and how vintage they are. So uh, I hang out on a forum called the Tech Scopes Forum, which is the forum where a lot of guys who are into Tektronics oscillos oscilloscopes hang out. And it turns out that a guy who lives not too far from me put these items up for sale. Two signal generators and a DC power supply. And I thought, perfect, I've been looking for these for a while. I want to include uh, radio repair in what I do, and the second signal generator uh, is perfect for that. It works at frequencies that are a lot higher, typically uh, the, of the sort that um, radios deal with. So uh, we're on our way to, to pick those up. And, uh, and this is a great way to uh, equip your lab. Take your time, be patient. Wait for the things that you need to come up for sale, maybe locally, at a really inexpensive price, and then go grab them. Uh, I don't buy anything new. I mean, okay, I bought a couple things new, like a, a capacitor here and there to fix an amplifier. Um, I did buy the uh, NESR, in-circuit capacitor checker new uh, because it came up uh, on sale on Amazon. Normally it goes for about 80 bucks. I got it for, I think, 55 So I grabbed that. But other than that, almost everything I've purchased to equip my lab, I've purchased used. So we're on this guitar safari. I know it's not about guitars. We're not picking up guitars. But at the end of the day, all of this is about feeding a guitar habit. Again, that's what Blue is great. Joe Bonamassa calls it when he goes out and tries to find guitars. He calls them guitar safaris. So I'm just picking up on that. Anyway, we should be at our destination shortly. And uh, once I get the gear, I'll show you what I got. 
Okay, so another successful guitar safari. This time picked up these three pieces of vintage gear for the test lab. And like I said, this is how you got to do it. You just keep your eyes open for really inexpensive but great quality and great condition test gear. And uh, the first piece here, this is a rack mountable HP6068 signal generator. And this thing is going to be great for testing radios. Uh, one of the really cool things about it is that you've got this knob here, right? And this is for the coarse adjustment of the frequency. But look at this. Look at the veneer fine-tuning adjustment. As you spin the big knob, the little one turns. But this little one is really for making that little fine-tuning adjustment. Now, this is like a transmitter. It's like an AM transmitter. So it's great for testing uh, radio gear. Uh, it covers all the high ends of the frequency. Meanwhile, frequency spectrum. Meanwhile, here we have this Rockland 5100 signal generator. This is going to be great for testing audio circuitry. This hits the low end of the frequency spectrum, you know, down where you make notes from a guitar or another electrical instrument. So this will simulate, uh, you know, a signal, a sine wave going through an audio circuit. And this is just going to be awesome to work with for testing amplifiers and then finally the DC power supply now this gear always like you know in total I think there's probably hundred and twenty pounds of gear here this thing alone the HP must weigh like 75 pounds so cool and what was really nice is just like last week when I met up that guy for that big mother load of tubes this guy was a really nice guy who sold it to me he went to the trouble of creating a, a DVD that shows me how to use this gear in case I need that and the other thing he did was he sent me an email right after I picked it all up saying if you have any questions about this gear just let me know so there you have it three pieces of incredible vintage gear for my vintage lab it's got to go into a rack because uh, it's all rack mountable. I have another device downstairs in my lab that's a rack mountable as well. It's a four channel oscilloscope. So I guess the next thing I got to shop for on the different marketplaces like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace is a rack to put all this gear in. Okay, I'm out.